So in this video, we're going to talk about how to uh, calculate the price of bonds and think about um, how that's related to the interest rate, right? And so this is very similar to the calculation um, in the first video of this chapter where we talked about calculating expected present discounted value, which of course makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you're going to get paid an interest rate over time, um, that's very similar to, you know, calculating the present discounted value. So we're going to focus mostly on discount bonds as opposed to coupon bonds, just because the math is a little bit simpler. Um, so if we have a one year bond, right, that promises to pay $100 next year, the question is, well, how much are we willing to pay for it? And that has to be related to the interest rate, right? Because we could earn interest on whatever we pay in uh, for the bond. We could just put it in, you know, say, the stock market or I mean, not the stock market, a savings account or a different bond uh, and get that amount at the end of the year. So the price currently will be 100 divided by the discount factor, which is just one plus I uh, T. So the interest, the one here is uh, the one year interest rate. Um, and if we think about, OK, well, what about the price of a two year bond that prom promises to pay $100 in two years? Well, now we have to discount that by not only the interest rate that we would get in the first year, but then also the expected interest rate that we would get in the second year. So this uh, nomenclature is, I think, is a little bit confusing here. But so T is this year, right? And T plus one is next year. The one in front is the one year interest rate, right? As opposed to a two year interest rate or three year interest rate. So we're comparing you know, the one year interest rate this year and the one year, the expected one year interest rate next year in order to calculate the, the price uh, of a two year bond. And so these are both going to be positive, right? And so that's both that's going to discount um, off of the one hundred dollar face value to give us the current price. And so, um, you know, we, we can calculate it, whether that interest rate is, you know, one percent or two percent or five percent or ten percent. Um, to give us the current price of the bond. So, I mean, this is this is really just the same thing here, except now if we think about, you know, a, a one-year bond versus a two-year bond, what's it going to be valued in year T plus one? Well, in year T plus one, right, in the, in the one year, the one-year bond is done. So we get one plus the interest rate. That's what we got. Uh, the two-year bond... We, don't, the, we still have the bond, right? The bond hasn't reached maturity yet. And so the sort of what we have is the expected price um, of that uh, bond divided by the expected price um, of the two-year bond, right? So what, what is the expected price of a one-year bond in year T plus one divided by the expected by the price of the two-year bond that we paid for uh, in year T? So a lot of, frankly, expectations is all about thinking about arbitrage, right? Arbitrage is how can I make more money? Um, and as long as arbitrage is happening correctly, then the returns of different assets has to be equal once we control for things like risk, right? But as long as we control for um risk and maturity and all of these things, then the expected returns should be equal. And, you know, we will see that this is going to be important when we talk about the flow of finances across uh, borders um, in the next section uh, in the semester, because, you know, if we think about, okay, well, should I buy a U.S. Treasury bond or a French government um, bond? Well, now I have to think about you know, the interest rate I get plus the exchange rate. So you're going to have to compare a lot of different things. So here we're just saying, all right, well, the expected return of um, the two bonds must offer the same one year return, right? And so we said the one year return for the um, one year bond is just one plus I one T. The one year return for the uh, two year bond is the expected price of uh, a future one-year bond divided by the price of the two-year bond in year T. And so if we just 
flip the denominator with the left hand side, we get that the price of the two year bond has to be equal to the expected price in a year of a one year bond divided by one plus IT. And this is, I don't know, I think a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Basically the idea is if I want to invest for two years, then the return I get from buying a two year bond today has to be the same expected return, right? I could be wrong. Expectations can always be wrong, but it has to be the same as the expected return from buying a one year bond today and then buying a one year bond next year, right? With what I got from my uh, first bond. So that's all that this is saying. Right. If you but the expected return of buying a two year bond has to be the same as buying two one year bonds in succession. So, all right. So let's think about that. What's the expected price of a one year bond next year? Right. So that was important in our our calculation. Well, it's just going to be one hundred dollars plus uh, divided by one plus uh, the expected interest rate next year. And therefore, our two-year bond today has to be $100 divided by 1 plus I, 1T, divided by 1 plus I, E, 1T plus 1. <laughs> so divided by the current one-year interest rate times the next year's expected one-year interest rate. And that's the same as what we had before, right? And so the idea here is just that arbitrage tells us that these have to be equal in expectations. Otherwise, if like one is higher, then either everybody's going to buy the two-year bond, if that gives you a higher return, or everybody's going to buy the one, uh, the two one-year bonds, and if that return is higher, until they're equal, right? And so the arbitrage uh, says that, you know, people will buy up one or the other until the expected value is equal. And as long as the markets are working well, there won't be too much arbitrage op opportunity. But of course, investment banks spend a lot of their time finding this arbitrage opportunity, right? And, and that's the way they make money. All right, so let's think about uh, interest rates in future years, right? So let's say we have an N-year bond, so however years that is. Um, so the yield to maturity on an N-year bond is the constant annual interest rate that makes the bond price today equal to the present value of future payments on the bond. So what does that mean? Well, all right, so the, for a two-year bond, right, that's just saying, well, whatever that interest rate is uh, has to be the same as the sort of average expected interest rates for this year and next year. So this says that the expected interest rate of any bond, right, whether it's two years or five years or 10 years, has to be approximately the average of the current one-year interest rates, you know, one at a time, right? So if the one year interest rates are expected to go up, then that would give a higher, you know, return to future years. If they're expected to go down, then that would give a lower uh, interest rate. So it's basically, I think this is kind of intuitive also, but you have to think about the average um, interest rates, short term interest rates going forward and how that affects the longer term interest rates today. All right, so, so far we haven't thought too much about risk, right? You can think of, so far we've only thought about, you know, interest rates, but obviously there is some risk and we talked about the major risk is, is like default. Um, we talked about the risk premium in um, chapter six, I think, um, where we said, you know, the risk premium is sort of the extra interest you have to pay um, in order to borrow, you know, depending on what lenders think the risk is. So if we add this into our um, equation, right, now our two-year bond not only has to worry about what the expected interest rate of a one-year uh, bond will be next year, but also what the risk premium is. And so the risk premium will increase um, the uh, average interest rate for that two-year bond, right? If that goes up, that's going to increase the interest rate uh, paid on this two-year bond. Um, and if it goes down, um, that will decrease the interest rate. And just one thing that I don't know if I mentioned explicitly, but it should be clear from the equations, is that 
when the interest rates or the risk premium go up, bond prices go down and vice versa, right? Because these are all in the denominator. So if we think about, you know, here is a, a yield curve from 2015. Um, and in 2015, our you know, very short term interest rates were zero, right? The federal funds rate target was was basically zero. Um, but investors clearly expected it to increase in the future, right? Um, and you can kind of see that, okay, well, when did they expect the Fed to start increasing um, the federal funds rate and therefore increasing interest rates paid on um, treasury bills and treasury bonds? Well, it was, you know, sometime between six months and a year, um, which actually probably turned out to be more or less accurate, right? The Fed did start raising uh, interest rates in, I think, 2016 uh, until, of course, the pandemic hit um, and they dropped them back down to zero again. Um, so, you know, the current 10 year Treasury um, bond interest rate, I think, is somewhere around one and a, one and a half percentage points.